Hey everybody, this is Sean at SPS Walkthroughs. Uh, today we're going to be talking about VirtualBox internal network. Uh, I've done this video before, but didn't have any sound with them, so I'm going to try to make it easier to understand and explain a little bit about well, pretty much everything. So, if you don't know already, the uh, goal of this walkthrough is to show you how to create a virtual internal network with internet access using VirtualBox. It's pretty easy to make a virtual internal network without internet access, but in order to get that internet access and not be part of your physical network can be a little hard to uh, figure out. It's not, I guess you could say it's not that well documented on the web. At any rate, um, here are the requirements. Uh, you need one host machine, so one physical machine. It should have, I would recommend it either have Windows 7 or or uh, some kind of uh, Debian based Linux. The reason why I put Lubuntu here is if you if you have if you don't have a lot of RAM it's good to have a very lightweight operating system as your host operating system so that way you have more RAM reserved for your virtual machines. At any rate, uh, next thing we need is a working internet connection on host machine. So, you know, before you start, obviously you want to have actual internet connection on your physical machine. If you don't, this is going to be pretty difficult to uh, set up. Next thing, uh, at least six to eight gigabytes of physical RAM. Like I said, it's not, if you don't have this exact amount of RAM, it's not a big deal. I've set this up with four gigabytes of RAM, but then again, I'm using server 2003 and XP for the virtual machines, so just keep that in mind. And then, you know, same thing with hard drive space. Uh, you want to have around 60 to 80 gigabytes of free hard drive space. It's going to use less if you use server 2003 or XP for the VMs. So, uh, next thing, before creating the virtual machines, know your IPs of the host machine. You should know this, and if not, we'll, we'll get into how, how to do that. And, the, and also the difference between your WAN interface and your LAN interface for both the virtual machines and your physical machines. So, the IPs that you're going to need are the host machine's IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway, and its DNS server. So this is, right here is just an example. This is the, uh, the IP address and the subnet mask and the gateway, which in this case is just a router. Um, and then these are your uh, DNS, these are your DNS addresses. So most likely these will not be the same for your system everyone has something different try try to um have a simple physical setup as possible you don't want to have the whole bunch of you know routers and switches and machines to deal with just try to be as simple as possible on the physical side of things so if you don't know them and don't know how to get to them well if you don't know how to get to them this may this walkthrough may be too advanced for you, uh, but regardless, if you want to know how to get to it, you in the command prompt you type the command ipconfig space slash all, and in Ubuntu or Debian based stuff, you type this. So the next next thing you're gonna need is. Uh, the VirtualBox desktop client. So it's pretty easy to download. It's just a program. This is how you will be able to create the virtual machines. 
So the three virtual machines that you're going to have, and this is at minimum, you can have more than this, but these all have to be running at the end to have your whole network be able to work. So the first one, the first one that you'll be installing and creating will have PFSense on it. Now it's it's based on, uh, as far as I know, it's based on FreeBSD and what we're going to be using it for is a virtual router. It's mainly used as a firewall, I believe. Again, I could be wrong. I don't really use it the way it's meant to be used, but at any rate, the, uh, the second virtual machine is going to be Windows 2012 or 2012 R2, and so just make sure that you have the the ISO or media for that. If you don't, you can get a, I believe it's a 180-day evaluation from Microsoft. Go to their website and, and you can download it. And then the third virtual machine is will just be a client, which will have Windows 7 or 8 or 8.1 Pro or Enterfi Enterprise. And uh, once again, you can get that ISO from Microsoft. Uh, I think you can only get the 8 and 8.1 now. I don't know if you can still get 7. Yeah, that will that'll be a 90-day evaluation. And again, to go back to the first virtual machine, how this how this uh, will act is it will be connecting your physical network to your internal network and keeping them separate at the same time so they're not conflicting with one another so uh, that's it so that's that's the requirements if you want to see a little more of a uh, visual representation of this whole thing here's the uh, here's a picture or diagram of what it should look like uh, physically um, something similar to this you know you have your just PC whether it's just a desktop PC or a, or a laptop and you have it connected to your router and your router is connected to your modem and the modem is connected to the wall or whatever and you may have a router and modem combined into one that's fine just basically this is this is how the uh, setup should be and then you have your three uh, virtual machines here running on a Windows 7 host and as far as the um, configuration this is it so in the this whole box here is is representing the host machine with Windows 7 with VirtualBox installed and then each three of these boxes are uh, are the virtual machines so the host machine is getting DHCP from the physical router and you can get all the configuration by once again typing in ipconfig space less all and uh, you get all this here and uh, so the uh, pfSense virtual machine which that's the one that you'll be installing first uh, the most important part with the uh, when you're c configuring the virtual machine in VirtualBox not actually installing it yet but just creating the virtual machine. You gotta make sure that the network adapter 1 is bridged, network adapter 2 is internal network. Now as far as the name for the internal network you want to uh, you can name it whatever you want just make sure that each one of these three virtual machines has the same internal network name. So if you're gonna call it Dusk call it Dusk for each one. It doesn't matter. It's completely uh, up to you. It doesn't make a difference. It just has to be consistent. So this is an example of uh, the WAN IP. Notice how it's on the same subnet as uh, the host machine. You have 10.0.0.15 and the virtual PFSense machine is 10.0.0.26. Now the LAN IP, this is where you can put anything you want. 
Uh, in this case, I chose 192.168.8.1. Well, when I say anything you want, hopefully uh, it goes without saying that anything with a private IP range. And then you would install the uh, second server, or, I'm sorry, the second virtual machine, which has Windows Server 2012 R2. And in Windows itself, you want to make sure that the you have a static IP configuration and the IP needs to be on the same subnet as your LAN IP for your PFSense VM. And your subnet mask, your gateway, gateway should be the same as your virtual router, same IP. Um, and the DNS should be the same as your LAN IP as well. And as far as the VM settings, the only real important one is just to make sure that the network adapter is internal network and has the same name. And lastly, the uh, Windows 7 uh, client virtual machine. Uh, at the end, it should have DHCP configuration. It's receiving the IP information from the DHCP server you will be setting up on the Windows Server virtual machine. Uh, this is going to be a role that you add. Uh, we'll go over that later. The virtual machine settings are the same as the Windows Server. Just make sure that Network Adapter 1 is internal network. So hopefully this has uh, helped out a little bit for the just preliminary setup to make sure that you have everything you need and all the information you need. And uh, we'll be getting into, in the next video, we'll be getting into uh, actually setting it up in uh, VirtualBox. All right, see you next time.